guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look in it on my favorite worms, currently my largest worms. They will eat anything from leaves to kitchen scraps. They're cold hardy, they're not fussy, and they're even good fishing worms. All right, so last time that we were in here, I fed them the weirdest things ever. So stick to the end and see what they did with all of the weird stuff like the olives and the pomegranates and the cranberries and the cut flowers. It was a very large feeding last time, 25 days ago. So let's take a look at them. All right, so these bins have been going for 245 days. This bin here was started with cocoons only, 500 of them that I purchased from Emily the Crazy Worm Lady in 2019. They spent the first couple of their years in a 10 gallon, I think that's 38 liter tote until I got this set up going. And so since July of 21, they have been in here. You can see the top looks really dry where I didn't have that lid. So I'm probably going to have to make a more concerted effort to cover this up we still have the furnace running from time to time. So let's kind of uh, just look and see what this older side is doing, because this is where we started the wedge. We started putting all the food right over here, and then we just built our way on. Now you can see this is a nice big worm. Yep. So now that they're in this larger container, I think they are starting to pick up a little bit of size. Now these are just European night crawlers. Oh look, my avocado's growing. If you're new to the channel, I tend to uh, allow whatever grows out in my bin to continue growing out. Uh, let's see, and if you watched the 55-gallon uh, blue bin the other day, you'll know uh, I did give another reason for my persistent fluffing of the bin. I was reading one of my textbooks and it stated that uh, you can actually get a buildup of CO2 and ammonia in the bins and that that can actually kill the worms. Um, I don't think I've ever smelled ammonia, but you know maybe there's particular kinds of food or bedding that might do that. So I'm just going to keep you know fluffing a little bit here. Now this bin here in particular has quite a bit of coconut coir because when I harvested these worms um, originally, I had a problem bin that was uh, getting really sticky and really wet and it would not dry out. So I kind of took the nuclear option and water harvested them, which just means that I you know, put them in a sieve and ran water through them. If you want to see that, uh, I can link that video. So I'm still kind of plugging through here. This is the almost finished end. Now this pile right here is actually almost a foot deep. If I go all the way to the top, it's a foot deep. But we're not going to leave it like that until we have to. My goal is to start harvesting these bins in about a month. There is a, um, a swap meet for plant people. And I called him and asked him, I said, can I instead of bringing plants, can I bring like worm castings and stuff? And they said, absolutely, whatever people would want to trade for, you can bring. So I am going to bring some of my worm castings, maybe even some of my uh, worm cocoons. So I'm just kind of looking through here. It does look a bit dry. Just in general, I think it's a bit dry. So, you know, I did have that one short lid on it and apparently that was not enough to keep it uh, from drying out. So we'll have to get something a little bit bigger since this is such a big bin. So this is the part where we should be running into the feeding over here. And we did feed a lot of weird stuff last time. I do take donations from people to feed the worms so I never really know what it is that I'm going to get. So let's start flipping over and see it was 25 days ago, and i uh, not really sure. I mean, I know that we put some flowers in here. I think there was some carnations from a flower arrangement in here. There was, um, I don't even know what all there was. So I think we're still seeing the lemongrass here. And 
maybe some kind of bread. But other than that, maybe this is that pomegranate getting some really weird mold on there. But even so, even in this feeding side, I don't think the moisture is sufficient. Yeah, not really sure what that is. Some kind of a citrus, I think. But yeah, that's that's pretty amazing because we had flower stems in here, and I'm I'm just seeing the very. This is a grape stem. So even even with the carnation stems, they managed to uh, eat all of them. So I had been thinking that I needed to up my game when feeding these guys because now it's getting into the it's getting close to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement now and so I think I'm going to have to increase their volume of feeding if we're only going to be looking in on these guys once every couple of weeks. So it's been three weeks since we looked in on the European night crawlers. But they are breeding. I'm seeing lots of cocoons in here. Here's my pumpkin stem. So we're just going to keep pushing all of the in-process stuff over and then we will make room for today's new feeding. So I am not seeing any of the leftover feeding except for whatever this is. And then the uh, stems, a little bit of bread. Kind of look at this very far end where I just tossed all of the dry bedding. So yeah, 25 days and they ate everything. And I'll, I'll put a picture below as to what we fed them. So let me get them a super good feeding. If you watch the 25 or the 55 gallon bin the other day, you know what they're going to eat. Check this out. That's right. Not an April Fool's joke. They're actually getting pumpkin. My friend Cece, the worm's godmother, has provided. And we are going to go big. Because I intend on starting to harvest this, I am going to finish the bin. So all of this delicious pumpkin, which oddly enough sat out and was freezing all winter, but yet it, it's still kind of tough. I don't, I don't even understand how that happened. So this is the part that we will start harvesting next time, and then this is something you don't actually see very often. What you have here is the end of the wedge. So I'm going to give them some bedding. Um, normally we don't get to see this part because blue is so much longer I don't think I ever really get to the end. But this one here, here we are. This is what the end of the wedge looks like. I'm going to give them a very, very good, healthy feeding of bedding here. This is my prepared bedding. It has uh, paper and cardboard and coconut coir and then a handful of grit and also kelp meal. The water that I use to start the bins is usually uh, um, tea from the, the worm castings or I just put straight up worm castings in there. Then I let it age usually for a couple of weeks if I can help it. The kelp meal and whatnot will actually uh, help the breakdown of the, the fibers and everything in here so that the worms can get at it a little bit faster. All right, so I'll kind of match these up. The worms can start moving over. And then the next time we look in on here, then we should have some harvesting to do over here. And we can check and see what they've done with all these pumpkins. All right, well, don't go anywhere. We've got one more bin. We've got our northeastworms.com uh, worms. So let me move you over. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, here we are on the northeast worms side. And these worms are much larger, uh, with the exception of, of course, the babies that have uh, been born here in the bin. These are some monsters that uh, Gatano gave me. So we're going to do the same thing. Now this bin only had a pound of worms in July. So they don't eat quite as fast as the two and a half pounds that were the uh, ones that I harvested from the cocoon only bin. 
So let's kind of look and see what they're doing over here. Kind of scrape off the super dry stuff to the, the feeding end. Getting some more sprouts. All right. Still got a high concentration of worms here. So it looks like there's still enough stuff for them to eat in here. I haven't fed at this end for months and months. And uh, look at that, another monster. But yeah, they, uh, even though there's not fresh food down at this end, they will still um, hang out down here and reconsume things. I wanted you to see the size of these two cocoons in relationship to each other. The bigger the worm, the bigger the cocoon. Look at the size of this cocoon. That is nuts. It's probably the biggest cocoon I've ever seen. And uh, it's par for the course because these are probably, aside from the African night crawlers, the biggest, biggest worms I've had. Okay, so we're getting a little further. We're still putting the food up. This ginger still looks like ginger. So don't have high hopes for that particular food for having made much progress. So they'll get around to it one of these days or they'll grow me a ginger plant. I don't know which one it's going to be yet. All right, so let's start flipping through where we know the feeding was. And we're still seeing um, more ginger. And I think we're still, we're actually starting to see the cranberries. Now the cranberries were, oop, all right. The cranberries were hard as a rock when we put them in here last time. So just kind of break them so the worms can get into them. Um, let's see, I don't know. This must be a sweet potato. And nice good moisture in here. I did pour the end of the um, bucket in here that had all the water, so that probably accounts for why the moisture is so much better in this bin than it is in the cocoon only original bin. But not exactly a fabulous worm ball, but uh, something. Get to see a concentration of worms. I'm going to keep moving the food down here. I hear plastic somewhere. Oh. Now sometimes I do that on purpose and sometimes I, you know, just find it. So that, that was unexpected plastic, but whatever was in it didn't get eaten because it was all wrapped up still. So I am going to leave that plastic in there so that the worms can clean it. Don't want to deny them any of their food, but they will. Next time I come in here, that will be totally clean and then I can throw it in the garbage. So we'll put that face side down so that it can get all the attention that it deserves. All right, so I'm just going to keep pushing everything over, except for the big food. I think the cranberries, we're just going to let them go with the rest of the smaller stuff. Looks like the, uh, the flower stems are getting eaten. So there we go, mounding everything up, and then we can start looking right here to see what else has or has not been eaten. So I'm going to just make a little pile here. And sometimes, you know, I do say that if you have too much food left over, don't feed again. But that kind of uh, depends on whether or not it's slow food or fast food. Like if all they had in the bin was this ginger, I would be denying the food denying the worms their food, you know, because they obviously aren't getting into that anytime soon. Uh, it's taking way longer than I thought it would. So when we're looking at the uh, really slow food that takes months and months and months, I'm not going to count that as something that the worms can get into right now. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue feeding as if that ginger is not here. Otherwise the worms would be not having any decent food to eat. So now that we've gone through everything, I think mixing the moisture from the um, other food and bedding is good. Kind of pull some of those cranberries down there. 
And then we are going to uh, top this up with some pumpkin. Okay, so we have got quite a bit of pumpkin here over quite a large area. So we have a lot of pumpkin over a large area, uh, but when we come back in, we can scoot that down as well. So let me get them some bedding. All right, there we are. Uh, the European night crawlers have had a huge, huge feeding, thanks to CC and the pumpkins. And next time, of course, this won't be ready to harvest, but we can scoot everything down that has been finished. If you want to see more about my European night crawlers, I have a playlist you can watch over there right now. Or if you want to see the water harvest I was talking about, I'll link it over there and you can watch that right now. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.